In lecture 4 we studied the basics of differential calculus. In lecture 5 we'll see how we can use differentiation in a number of useful ways. In module 1 we'll apply the techniques of differentiation to a different type of function, that is, implicit functions. In module 2 we'll use derivatives to help find approximate values for more complex functions. We'll start with linear approximations and then go on to techniques that provide increasingly more precise approximations. In Module 3, we'll take a brief diversion to examine elasticity from a mathematical perspective. We'll finish off in Module 4 with a discussion of continuity of functions and a little bit more on limits, both of which are useful for our understanding of calculus. In the first four lectures, we dealt with explicit functions. These are functions in the form of y equals fx. We have the exogenous variable on the right-hand side in various terms, and the endogenous variable, dependent variable, on the left-hand side. In other words, the dependent variable is written explicitly in terms of the independent variable. This is not always the case. In some functions, the dependent variable is not isolated on one side of the equation. For example, we have the equation to a circle, but here we're specifying that y is a function of x. These are implicit functions. In this module, we're interested in differentiating implicit functions. Sometimes we can rearrange an implicit function and get it into an explicit form. Other times this is not possible or it's quicker to use implicit differentiation. Let's start with a very simple example, xy equals 5. Again, we're specifying that y is a function of x. Of course, we could easily rearrange this so that we have an explicit function, but we won't. The outcome is summarized in this slide, but let's work through it in more detail. The function is xy is equal to 5. We're going to apply the product rule. Recall the product rule from lecture 4. y is a function of x, so we can rewrite our equation as x times f of x is equal to 5. We'll apply the product rule to our function. I'll use the ddx notation to make it a bit more clear. The first term will be d dx of x times f of x plus x times d dx of f of x is equal to d dx of 5. d dx of x is equal to 1, so it's 1 times f of x plus x times d dx of f of x is just f prime x. And on the right-hand side, d dx of a constant, 5, is equal to 0. We can go back to having y instead of f of x. That gives us y plus x times, well, f prime x is just y prime, equal to 0. In implicit differentiation, we usually use the y prime notation. We can rearrange that. We can subtract y from the left-hand side and then divide through by x. That gives us y prime is equal to minus y on x for x greater than 0. In this simple case, we can show that that's the same result we'll get by forming an explicit function and then differentiating the normal way. y prime is equal to minus y on x. xy is equal to 5. So y is equal to 5 on x. We can substitute for y back here. We'll have y prime is equal to minus 5 on x times 1 on x is equal to minus 5 on x squared, which of course is the result we'd get if we differentiate the function in this form. So that's the basic idea of differentiating implicit functions. Differentiating implicit functions is not that different to differentiating explicit functions, really, once you have a little practice. Let's try it with something more challenging. This is the general approach we take. We differentiate each side with respect to x, considering y as a function of x. In example 1, we use the product rule, but we'll see we usually use the chain rule to deal with higher powers of y. Once we've differentiated each term, then we solve the equation for y prime. Now let's differentiate this implicit function. We'll differentiate each term in the equation separately and then put them all together. We'll start with the first term, y cubed. We want d dx of y cubed 
this is where we use the chain rule. We'll let z equal y cubed. dz dy, of course, is 3y squared. dz dx, which is what we want, is equal to, well, it's d y cubed dx, and that's equal to dz dy times dy dx. We found dz dy, that was 3y squared times dy dx. We usually write that as 3y squared times y prime. Our next term is 3x squared times y. Here we'll use the product rule since we have a product. d dx of 3x squared times y will equal, well, differentiate the first part there, 3x squared, so that'll give us 6x times y plus 3x squared times, well, the first derivative of y with respect to x is y prime. There we have it. That completes that term. Next we look at the right hand side of the equation. There we have d dx of 13. Of course that's equal to 0 since 13 is a constant. Putting all those together we have 3y squared times y prime plus 6xy plus 3x squared times y prime equals 0. We can collect like terms, so we'll have y prime times 3y squared plus 3x squared plus 6xy is equal to 0. We can move the 6xy over to the right hand side, and then we'll divide through by 3y squared plus 3x squared, and then we can simplify a little further. So up here we have our equation differentiated with respect to x. Our last step was to solve for y prime, which gave us the solution down here. Here's another example. We take the process one step further this time. First we find the slope at a particular point on the function, dy dx, and then we find the equation to the tangent of the function at that point. Either pause here and view example 3, or come back later once you've completed the rest of module 1. We've seen how we can find the first derivative of an implicit function with respect to x. We can also find higher order derivatives. In this course we'll restrict ourselves to finding the second derivative. Going back to our simple example to illustrate the process, we have xy equals 5. In example 1 we found that y plus y prime times x is equal to 0, where our final form was y prime is equal to minus y on x. When we're finding higher order derivatives, it's usually easier to differentiate the function in this form rather than this form. So differentiating the function again, we start with the first term, y. The first derivative of that is y prime. We use the product rule on the second term. So we'll have y times the derivative of x, which we want, so y prime, plus x times the derivative of y prime, which is y prime prime. We want the second derivative, and we don't want the first derivative terms in there. So our next step is to substitute in for y prime. We have 2y prime there. We substitute in there because we know that y prime is equal to minus y on x. Make that substitution and rearrange, and we get the second derivative y prime prime is equal to 2y on x squared. Again, this is the result we would get if we rearranged our function into an explicit function and then differentiated. There are the basic principles. Let's put those principles into practice with the function for example 2. We'll find the second derivative and evaluate it when x equals 2 and y equals 1. We found the first derivative of the function in example 2. Remember, it's often easier to find the second derivative if we start from the expanded form like this, rather than the form where we have y prime on the left-hand side and all the x's and y's on the right-hand side. 
We'll differentiate with respect to x term by term. We'll start with the first term. It's a product, 3y squared times y prime. So we'll use the product rule. First we need to differentiate 3y squared with respect to x. We'll use the chain rule. We'll add z equal 3y squared. That implies dz dy is equal to 6y. dz dx equals dz dy times dy dx. Well, that's equal to 6y times dy dx, remember, is y prime times y prime. Now we can go on and differentiate 3y squared times y prime. d dx of 3y squared times y prime. We apply the product rule. It's equal to. We have the derivative of the first part, 3y squared. That's 6y times y prime. That in brackets. Times y prime plus 3y squared times well, the derivative of y prime is y prime prime, the second derivative. That's equal to 6y times y prime squared, which is different to y prime prime, plus 3y squared times y prime prime. Our next term is 6xy. We'll differentiate that, and then we'll go on and differentiate 3x squared times y prime. D dx of 6xy. We have another product there. The first part of the product rule will be uh, 6 times the derivative of x, which is 1, times y, so it'll be 6y, plus 6x times y prime. The last term is 3x squared times y prime. Again, we'll use the product rule. Differentiating 3x squared, it'll be 6x times y prime plus 3x squared times y prime prime. Putting all that together, we'll have 6y times y prime squared plus 3y squared times y prime prime plus 6y plus 12xy prime. We have 6xy prime there and 6xy prime there. That gives us 12xy prime plus 3x squared times y prime prime equals 0. We could collect the y prime primes. y prime prime times 3 times x squared plus y squared plus 6y plus 6yy prime squared plus 12xy is equal to 0. We want to evaluate the second derivative at the point 2, 1. We could substitute in here. We have values of x and y. We know what the first derivative is. We can find a value for that at point 2, 1 and then solve for y prime prime. This is an example from the textbook and that's the way they do it. There's not much of a challenge in that though, is there? Let's see if we can find an explicit form for y prime prime. We can subtract 6y, 6y times y prime squared plus 12xy from both sides. Our next step is to divide through by 3 times x squared plus y squared. In this case, as we'll see, it's simpler to treat each of the three terms on the right hand side separately. We can cancel out the 3's in each term. Next we want to substitute in for y prime. We have y prime here and here. That implies that y prime prime is equal to the first term is the same minus 2y minus 2y on x squared plus y squared times y prime squared that will be minus 2xy all squared in the numerator over x squared plus y squared all squared minus 4x on x squared plus y squared times
times y prime minus 2xy over x squared plus y squared. We can simplify that. We need to be careful. We have a minus sign here, but it's squared, and another minus sign here. y prime prime is equal to minus 2y on x squared plus y squared. We end up with a minus sign here because the minus 2xy was squared. 8x squared times y cubed in the numerator over x squared plus y squared all cubed plus and minus minus 8x squared y divided by x squared plus y squared all squared. Now we have an explicit function for y prime prime. We want to evaluate y prime prime at the point 2 1. Substituting in for x and y we'll have y prime prime is equal to minus 2 on 5 minus 8 times 4 times 1 on 5 cubed plus 8 times 4 times 1 on 5 squared. We can do that calculation and we get 78 on 125. Our final example in this module is an economic application of implicit functions. We have a simple macroeconomic model for a closed economy, that is, there are no imports or exports. This is also a libertarian heaven, there is no government sector. Total income is made up of consumption and investment. We want to determine how income, that's y, changes with investment, i. Go to the video for example 5 when you're ready.